Okay, everybody, wake up. You may have, uh, you may remember the phrase as a child, maybe some of your bedtime memories, maybe somewhere along your life, you've ever heard someone make the statement, good night, don't let the bed bugs bite. You ever heard that? Well, I'll tell you, growing up as a small child, I developed a fear of bed bugs. I was always afraid they were going to come up and maybe eat me up, uh, maybe from out of the closet or underneath the bed. But we're seeing now that bed bugs are more than just a medieval myth. In fact, bed bugs are real. The name for that is Cymex lectularis. And what these bed bugs do, and we're seeing more of these these days because of an increase in world traffic as people begin to fly and go different places, and as our pesticides get weaker, we're actually seeing that bed bugs are real. And there's a resurgence of bed bugs in our society today. We're finding them in college dorm rooms and in dirty hotel rooms in New York cities. But these bed bugs are more than just a medieval myth. And what these bed bugs do as you go to sleep as these bed bugs begin to burrow into your skin and they begin to suck the blood and the life out of you and so the old saying night night sleep tight don't let the bed bugs bite is a real phenomenon but today I want to talk about a different kind of bed bug I want to talk about some spiritual bed bugs that we may encounter as we lay our heads on our pillow uh, those are the bed bugs of worry Fear, maybe being afraid of, of, of what tomorrow may bring, maybe the loneliness and despair that we, may, uh, that we may encounter, maybe grief from the loss of a loved one. Probably the worst is the what ifs, the regret. All those bed bugs that begin to surface and they begin to race through our mind as we lay our heads on our pillow. And as we look at what the Bible says about this, there's one thing for sure, that the Bible encourages us to have a calm heart. As we looked at earlier, a calm heart is one that has been conditioned to sleep peacefully through adversity because of a growing assurance of God's providence, God's provision, and God's protection in every detail of their life. Now, there are, there are several examples of this in the Bible. One is David in the Old Testament, and we're going to discuss him in Psalm 3 and Psalm 4 and Psalm 63 when he was running from Absalom. Another, of course, is, uh, is Jesus, as we saw earlier. But I want to focus on one today uh, in the Apostle Peter. Now, if we look at the Bible, we see that, that Peter slept a, a lot. And if you're familiar with this story in Acts chapter 12, Peter had been imprisoned, and they had just killed James, and Peter was the next in line to be executed. And there he was the night before uh, the day of his execu execution, uh, in, chained in between four squads of soldiers. And we see one of the most ironic things there, and it says in Acts 12, 6, and when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with chains between two soldiers. Don't you find that ironic? Here is the apostle facing probable death and execution, maybe a horrific, painful type experience the following day, and yet he was able to sleep calmly. He was able to sleep um, without being worried or concerned about all of those things. I mean, if you would be you and I, maybe we would be maybe grieving over lost relationships or maybe opportunities that we never be, would be able to experience. Or maybe we'd be worried about the pain and the suffering that we were fixing to deal with the next day. But here we see the disciple dozing, calmly trusting God. I wonder if Peter didn't reflect back in this time at a time when he remembers Jesus sleeping peacefully on the boat. You all know the story there in Luke and in Mark and in the Synoptic Gospels when, when, when Jesus got in the boat and he said, let's go to the other side. And sure enough, Jesus went to sleep there in the bow of the boat. And it says in Luke 8.23, But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. 
And here it is. We see Jesus modeling this idea of a calm heart, this principle of a calm heart in his life, that all around him was this tempest, this turmoil, this, this, this ocean. And how Jesus, yet uh, with all these things going on around him, could sleep in peace. You know, there's an old saying that still, wa still waters run deep. The fact that Jesus, even though all these external things could have potentially robbed him of sleep, Jesus had this imperturbability, this, this equanimity, this internal depth and peace that came. As we look at this idea of a calm heart and how to nurture this, and the question is, is how do we nurture this calm heart that we see in the life of Peter? and we see in the life of Jesus. And the first thing we're going to talk about is some things that we need to know, some truths that really need to be understood at a gut level. And then we're going to move on to some things that we need to do. First of all, a calm heart needs to know, that as they lay their heads on their pillows, the importance of God's providence, God's provision, and God's protection as they sleep. 